I took Christmas off, but pretty much every day, no, every day, except for Christmas, um, I studied. And if some, some days, three, four, five hours, some days, half hour, um, a little more often, I would say it was on the, it was on the higher end because I wanted to get this thing sure. out of the way. I'm, I'm pretty good at maintaining a routine and consistency. That's usually, that's, that's a key to I'm success. Doing. I mean, you told me earlier that you wake up at 4 a.m., right? Yeah, I woke up at 4 today. Hi, Pat. Hey, Wasim. How's it going? Hey, not too shabby. So congratulations on passing your FE Electrical in first attempt with me uh, you. using uh, the exam prep resources. And uh, it's definitely a big achievement. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I felt it. Um, I, fortunately for my wife, while well, I was still waiting for the results, uh, I was sent away on a site visit for my company, so I didn't okay. have to be around her while I was, you know, anxiously waiting to find out. Uh, <laughs> okay. <how it> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's nerve wracking. I mean, the wait can be nerve wracking. The whole preparation is a lot, um, a lot of effort you know consistent effort so if it's a one-time deal that you have to put in some time and effort for a few days or even for a couple of weeks most people would be okay with it but uh how would you walk me through your exam preparation journey uh, and even before that let's dive into your academic background when you graduated and everything sure uh yeah i so i got my undergrad in physics in back in 2001 um, bounced around a few jobs and realized that physics is great, but if you actually want to make some money with something, and if you don't have a PhD in, P- in physics, you need to get something more concrete. So I went back for school and I got a, a master's in electrical engineering. Okay. Um, and, uh, after that, um, I was swallowed up by oil and gas. Uh, I live up here in Alaska. So your master's, sorry, your master's in electrical engineering was, uh, which specialization was it? Was it in power, electronics, communications? More electronics. My uh, At the time, I was actually uh, toying with the idea of going into biomedical engineering. Okay. And my particular advisor was heavily involved in SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome uh, okay. research. Yeah. And I was involved in a design for a a wireless baby monitor essentially a detector basically yeah uh-huh yeah pulse oximetry heart rate and all that kind of stuff um but living up here in alaska um you know unless i wanted to move out options were somewhat limited um so when i finished up my degree uh, i was swallowed up by an oil and gas service mm-hmm. company right um and i never took the fe let alone the pe um yeah. because um, to get to graduate with a master's in my school, they had like an internal um, review process that I had to study for, like an internal test. Okay. But the FE was never required because I got my undergrad in physics. Um, right. And of course, with my job, they did you know they didn't care. Um, yeah. So I never bothered with the PE. Never bothered with the FE. And then I did. I worked in the oil and gas field for about eight years in the field. Um, then I was brought in for management. Um, for another five years where I was basically supervising the people I used to um, used to work alongside. And I did that for about five years until COVID wiped us out. Um, it was interesting, you know, one day you're in a safety meeting and COVID is like bullet point number three on the safety uh, concerns. And then a month later, we're talking about bringing our headcount down to zero. Wow. Uh, yeah. So complete, it was, it was com- complete, uh, uh, complete stop, right? Yeah, uh, there was just too, there was too many legal restrictions to send people out oh, of okay. the field with um, the distances and, and everything. Yeah, and we were having people like fly up to Alaska, quarantine in a hotel for yeah. several weeks, and then go to the rig site for another four weeks. And then if they had if some of them lived in Hawaii, maybe they had their own restrictions. And I think eventually the operators and the service companies just yeah. And uh, it was kind of a dr- and the dr- price of oil also crashed. Yeah, like negative thirty seven dollars. Yes, those I remember that, was, that. I didn't even yeah. think that was uh, technically possible, but apparently it yeah. was. So I laid off all of my employees, and then a month later, I had to say see you later as well. Right. Um, I was brought in with the COVID response, ironically enough, uh, with uh, local governments. I helped with some of the managing of like the contracts uh, for both first with the city and then with the state. A lot of uh, grant management. 
um that was never going to be permanent but it was kind of a good a good experience something to keep me occupied um sure. while I was trying to figure out what to do with my life and um I think if anything the big lesson I walked away from was I become very leery of specialization especially with, with something so niche because right what I the, the type of drilling technology that I operated on and and and, and managed uh was a very s- small subsection of all of um you know, oil and gas. Right. Um, and I think what I wanted was something, something that, you know, if, if one particular industry was to go belly up, yeah. uh, you know, I would have, you know, other options. And I did find that I'm with an engineering firm now and they do yeah. everything. I'm involved in five different projects, some with oil and gas, some with battery storage in California, right? Uh, some with the the government for building some, you know, dormitories for seasonal workers. It's, it's all over the map. It's right. It's hectic and stressful, but you know, it's the bigger danger. My mind is uh, uh, things slowing down, and if you have like a diverse, uh, for sure, set of things you're working on, uh, I think you'll protect yourself against that. Yeah. So, how does Afi fit in the whole picture then? Yeah. So, uh, my my engineering firm I work uh, with is, uh, you know, they're they're, you know, becoming an engineer and getting your PE license is sort of an expectation, especially for pulling someone in like me. Um, right. And so, you know, talking with uh, my supervisor, you know, kind of talking about what what would bringing someone like at my level look like since, you know, I have all this you know, maybe management experience and some other niche uh, te- technical experience. What would that look like to bring me on? And I think we had sort of a rough tentative agreement said, all right, well, why don't we start with your, your FE since you, you never got that? Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you try to get that knocked out within a year? Mm-hmm. Um, so there was nothing formal about it. I just... I just decided to start doing it and I found you um, and I decided, all right, we'll give this a shot. It looks good. I tried some of your sample lectures um, and then I decided to, to dive right into it. Um, exam prep. I did, I did start with uh, as a foundation you know, some of your advice as far as how to tackle the exam. Um, mm-hmm. A few things that I found for myself is obviously you have to do the whole, you know, whether it's, whether it's something that you feel like you got or something that's really, really hard don't skip anything, you know, try to absorb all of it. Yeah. And, um, and also try to become engaged with the material. The thing that I found that helps me the most is, um, just taking notes. Um, I, I, I never passively watch any of your videos, even if it's something that might seem kind of, um, uh, like rudimentary, I'll still take notes on it because it helps me stay engaged. Yeah. Um, And I think that helped me, uh, certainly for the long term. And then getting used to the exams. I mean, trying to simulate as as close as possible to what the test will actually look like. So, you know, I tell myself, no cheating, no looking up, up something. If you get it wrong, you get it wrong. You'll go over it later. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you make sure you answer everything, um, since you're not uh, penalized for wrong answers, mm-hmm. um, you know, you have to answer every question. And uh, so even if, you know, you have no clue, you at least got a 25% shot um right. but you can increase that chance if you have a at least a maybe like an educated guess where where the, where the question could lie um so that yeah. might increase your odds a little bit um so yeah that's good now in terms of your journey uh patrick uh you started uh late last year is that correct yeah i started studying end of october it was looking like this company was going to give me an offer and i just decided... yeah yeah, and I figured out what else am I going to do? Let's let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. Um, and then I took Christmas off, but pretty much every day, no, every day except for Christmas, um, I studied. And if some some days I gave you three, four, five hours, some days I gave you a half hour. Um, a little more often, I would say it was on the it was on the higher end because I wanted to get this thing sure. out of the way. Um, but yeah, I it, I'm I'm pretty good at maintaining a routine and consistency that's you that's, that's a key to success doing. i mean you told me earlier that you wake up at 4 a.m right yeah i woke up before today <laughs> <laughs> so that tells me a lot about you uh 90 of the people cannot make it happen on a regular basis even over the weekends correct oh yeah oh yeah um uh, my wife and i she was very supportive throughout this process we were pretty busy uh there are a lot of things to get done over the weekends sure I, my you know my heart goes out to her she took on a lot more of whether it was the shopping or getting kids to where they need to be 
so that yeah. she could free up my time to yeah talk to you. <laughs> you <laughs> exactly and it's for it's again as i said it's not for one weekend it's not for a week it's not for two weeks it takes uh in your case it took roughly what uh five months four months four to five months four or five months whatever uh i guess i took the exam march 11th i started yeah at the end of october last year so whatever that yeah. turned out to be yeah. So see, this is, um, I, I did another interview uh, yesterday uh, with one of my P power students. He passed the exam and he made a pretty blunt statement. He's like, we're seeing those of, uh, you know, just tell the students that if they want to pass the exam, they have to make lifestyle adjustments. Literally, that's the word he used. And uh, I fully agree. There are some students, I mean, if you are a recent grad, if you're in fourth year, if you're in final year or just recently graduated within the last couple of years, maybe you can get by with less amount of training, uh, studying, and with a shorter timeline. But at least within my courses and my programs for both F electrical and P-Power, <clears throat> the average age is basically around 30, 30 years, uh, 27 to 35. Um, some of my students are 15 years out of school, right? Uh, uh, it's not an I'm talking about FE, and it's not uncommon uh, to find students who are 20 plus years out of school. So the dynamics are very different, both in terms of the fact that you have not been to school in a long time, exam taking strategy that you emphasized on, right? You took it to heart, the advice I gave in terms of how you deal with difficult persons and you know, guessing and this and that. But the most important thing, I guess, is that none of that would matter if you're not putting in the time and effort and there's no way around it. Oh, oh, sure. And there's there's a lot of, you know, reframing you have to do and inner reflection when you engage in something like that. You know, it wasn't just that I wanted to pass this exam. You know, when I told you about how my wife, you know, was helping me so much, you know, I would say to myself, you know, when I'm studying, hey, she's giving this to you. She's giving you this time. So yes. use it, you know, treat it as something sacred. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because it's your entire family that's taking the exam and uh, exactly. everybody's involved in it. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, for sure. Exactly. So that takes uh, an additional level of responsibility, right? Um, so you got the you got the exam done in first attempt. Uh, kudos to you, Patrick. And again, as I said, lots of time and effort. And uh, in terms of my resources, how do you how do you utilize the resources uh, for exam preparation? So, I mean, the core of uh, what I did was the um, the on demand. You know, going through your lectures. Um, I took my time with it. I I didn't just pause your lectures to do the problems. I paused to stop and take notes if I had to catch up. Right. Um, so that's that's how serious I took it. So I think I I would say as far as your on-demand course, I maximized that. I milked that out as much as you possibly could. Right. Um, I didn't do, unless you actually provided for free, I didn't really take advantage of your on-demand course uh, for your FE. That's going to change for PE. You mean uh, the live training? Yeah, uh, yeah. What did I say? Yeah, yeah live the live training. You you didn't have chance to go through the live training, so you basically utilize on demand. But for the P power, you are in on demand plus live. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I will definitely take advantage of that for for that. Um, kind of a what about the learned. study guide, Patrick? Did you use this book as well? I did not. No, I did not. Purchase didn't. Okay. Study guide. <laughs> okay. So you just uh, relied exclusively on the on demand course. Exclusively on the on demand course. I mean, it's it's a balancing act. For as much as I want to, you know give as much time as possible there's so many hours i'm awake during the day you know yeah. uh, it's, i got a full-time job that's probably more than full-time i i work usually more than eight hours a, a day right. Uh, right and then get my family so um for as much as i would love to take do you use all three of your resources um, yeah I have, I have to pick and choose and i have to prioritize like all right if i'm yeah. gonna give you one which one's it gonna be right so the on demand did the job for you. you Utilize the quizzes and the mini exams built into the exam, oh, uh, yeah. built into the um, course, and uh, the solved problems and explanations, and that was enough. Now let's quickly uh, talk about your P Power exam preparation. So you're enrolled in the live training program. It's uh, going to start in a few weeks' time, and uh, for P Power, I sort of convinced you that let's combine the on demand plus live training component to it because. P power is a little bit of a different exam altogether. It's a little bit more in depth. In FE, you sort of have to sort of, you know, three minutes per question. It's a continuous race against the time, covering entire undergraduate engineering coursework. So that becomes kind of tricky. Um, 
Are you looking forward to PE power exam preparation? I, I'm already doing it. And yes, uh, and for a, a lot of different reasons. I mean, not just because, you know, I would love to have this exam done as well. But, you know, when I would uh, study for the FE, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd study in the morning and the evening with, with you for the FE. And then I'll go do my job. And with exception to maybe power and a few other things, I, in the back of my mind, I always knew I'm never going to use a Z transform oh, for sure, <laughs> or, or to know all the different, uh, you know, header nomenclature for a, you know, uh, yes. for an IP address um, for my job. Right. But right. now, you know, I look through the, I look through your content. I look through, um, you know, the the, the PE, um, the NC specification. Delete. Yeah, yeah exam specification. Even though a lot of it, I'm still. I feel like I'm a baby with, I I can recognize that. Like, oh yeah, we do that. We do that. We do that. I, you know, we size cables. I, my boss demands that I have the NEC memorized right. and I have to be able to at least know where to go with IEEE to find a particular standard to address some issue. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just that I'm preparing for a PE. I feel like I, I want to, the notes I'm taking now, the notes I took for the FE will probably go in the fire this summer when I'm, when I'm camping. <laughs> but the notes I'm taking for the PE exam, I think will probably will stay with me um, because I'm I have no doubt that at some point some issue will come up and they'll need some response and all that. Oh yeah, we talked about what that with Wasim. So yeah, I, I feel like this is definitely stuff I'm learning that I can feel it for life. Um, yeah, that I, I want to take with me. Exactly. I'm gonna quickly share a couple of stories with you and then we'll call it off. Uh, some of my students, you know, when they go through the PE Power program, um, sometimes during the program, they start getting offers or they've already passed the FE and they, you know, say EIT and recruiters are able to sort of, uh, you know, they reach out and convince that that's at least give an interview. So, so many students, while even they're in the middle of the PE Power program, they're like, we've seen technical interviews. We used to be scared. I used to be scared of technical interviews. But now, actually, when they ask me a question, you know, my eyes light up and I school them, literally. This is how three-phase systems work. These are sequence components. These are uh, This is per unit system analysis. And they look forward to the technical portion. And students who actually, you know, go on to become PEs, complete the coursework and whatnot, some of them, you know, asked me that, Vasim, I want to go through this again. Uh, some students have sort of re-enrolled in the program just because they find the technical discussions, uh, the details, the derivations, the background, uh, a lot of it is applicable to their day-to-day -day job. So uh, I'm confident that you're going to have a lot more fun with the power exam preparation. And for somebody with the scenario that you were in, you were out of school for like you graduated first in 2001 and then went for your master's. So roughly give or take about 20 years out of school, right? Since you're undergrad, um, FE was a big deal, right? Getting FE done was a huge challenge, which you have surmounted. Now the PE is gonna be difficult in its own ways, but a lot more fun as you have correctly observed. I think so too, yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for your time, Patrick. I uh, really appreciate it. All the tips that uh, and recommendations and suggestions that you uh, provided. I guess the biggest takeaway for my viewers is that there is no shortcut. Okay. You got to put in four to five hours, you know, consistently um, uh, on average about 20 hours a week, even regardless of which resources you're using, whether you're using my program or some other program or studying on your own. Um, this exam actually takes a lot of a lot out of you, and oh, yeah. uh, for for a lot of students when they walk out of the exam, you know, oh, it's not, yeah, it's it leaves you a little bit uh, second uh, guessing, right? That yeah. did I select that answer correctly? Did I select this one correctly? Because it's it goes through, it, you know, it doesn't give you a chance to breathe. Really, it goes so fast, right? Um, so the best you can do is really put put your best foot forward and realize that you're in it for the long haul for in terms of matter of months, not a few weeks to get this thing done. Yeah, it's you, you have to you have, you have to do it. I mean, you have to go all in or it's or nothing. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Really appreciate it. Take care, Wasim. We'll be talking with you lots. Likewise. Thank you.